fun weekend. This is the tossed offs to make on your way to Tofino to cool it. I got this video idea from Downey Live TV. So shout out to him for thanks. It was a good video. I don't remember all the stops he made. I know I have a couple different ones in this video. And yeah, let's head on to the first stop. But enjoy the view. Alright, so we just landed into Nanaimo. We're at our first stop. It's it's a definitely a hidden gem. We're at the Abyss. It's totally underrated. Very few people talk about it. And it's super neat. So let me show you it. So this is the Abyss in Nanaimo, BC. It is essentially this big crack in the ground caused by an earthquake. It's honestly a remarkable thing to see. The crack is 16 inches wide and it's a little scary just standing over it. I kept feeling like I was going to fall in or drop something. <laughs> Just be careful if you bring your pets or children because the gap in the ground is definitely large enough for them to fall in. I tried looking down and in the deepest spot, I could not see the bottom. This is just a fun, easy hike where you can just see how powerful earthquakes can be. And get some one of a kind photos. Now if you do decide to visit the abyss, just be aware on how to get here. Our GPS led us in the wrong direction. Parked on the road. As you can see, the abyss isn't even in the mountain. You want to get to this road and hike up this trailhead. Once you start walking, just always keep to your right. The first right you make, you're going to immediately feel like you're on the wrong path. Just keep going. Hike up these overgrown stairs and you'll end up here. Keep to your right, and if you find yourself underneath these power lines, and you can see your car parked in the distance, you'll know you're on the right path. Just keep going, keep to your right, and overall it's an easy 30 minute hike until you reach the abyss. Our next stop is a little park right off the highway. This is Top Bridge Regional Trails in Parksville, BC. This is just a nice spot to pull over, let the dogs go for a run and take a quick swim in the Englishman River. There were a lot of mountain bikers and it seemed to be a pretty popular spot for locals and tourists. There were lots of areas to rest, go cliff jumping or just get some more amazing photos. This area was beautiful and had so much natural beauty. Now if you're willing to drive 30 minutes out of your way, you have to visit Englishman River Falls Provincial Park. We actually camped here for a night, but even if you're not planning on doing that, there's a lot to see and do here. I'm at Upper Englishman Falls and it looks so good behind me. Behind me is one narrowest canyon associated waterfalls in British Columbia. So yeah, this waterfall is one of two and one of the main attractions. There's a lot of history behind this waterfall and a lot of aboriginal stories that go along with it. It's a gorgeous sight, a five minute walk from the parking lot and there were a ton of photographers here. Once you've got your pictures you can hike down to the Lower Englishman Falls. It's a short 30 minute hike, but be sure to bring your swimming suit and a towel because they had a lot more cliff jumping and swimming down here. It honestly looked like so much fun and something I wasn't prepared for. So this one I wasn't going to include, but it's just so unique and different it had to be included. This is Goats on the Roof in Combs, BC. It's exactly like it sounds. It's a country market with goats on the roof. My only recommendation, and as you can see, it can get incredibly busy. The first time we showed up during a Saturday in the summer, we couldn't even find a parking spot. We came back early the next morning and no one was there. Beside the country market they have Billy G's Donuts that seem to sell out pretty fast, an ice cream shop, candy shop, and this statue cemetery. Again, just a great place for more unique pictures. Also, if you head towards the back of the parking lot behind Goach on the Roof, you'll find where they keep the goats. They seem pretty used to people, so if you want a more up-close and personal experience with the goats, 
you can try your luck at the back of the farmer's market. All right, so I'm at Qualicum Falls Provincial Park. This is the lower falls. I don't have enough time to explore the entire park, but this is definitely one of the more popular stops along the way to Tofino and Yukule. I wish I could check out the upper falls, but I'll show you the lower falls. I was in a bit of a rush when I visited Little Qualicum Falls Provincial Park, so I didn't get to explore a lot. If you decide to skip out on Englishman River Falls Provincial Park, this is a good alternative. Qualicum Falls is 5 minutes off the highway and a super easy 5 minute walk to the falls. The trails around here are just as beautiful as other Vancouver Island stops. Plus the river was crystal clear. The only downside is during summer and as you can see in the video, the water level gets extremely low. Next up is McMillan Provincial Park. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I thought that intro was a good idea. If you plan on traveling to Yukulit or Tofino, the highway will take you right through McMillan Provincial Park. As you can see, the parking lot here can get a little crazy because it's so limited, but it's possible to see this entire park within an hour. Since the highway splits the park on two sides, you have the north with beautiful hiking trails and Cameron Lake. On the south side of the highway you have more towering trees, creeks, viewpoints, and this. Alright, so this is a Douglas fir. It's the biggest tree in the forest, 800 years old. Yeah, so this is one of the highlights of McMillan Provincial Park. This is the largest and tallest tree in the forest, which, believe me, is pretty impressive. If you're driving through here, you have to stop. There are tons of interesting information. People will be taking pictures everywhere. You know, it's easy to see why McMillan Provincial Park is one of the most visited provincial parks in British Columbia. All right, so our next destination isn't super popular yet, but maybe it will be after this video. This is the hole in the wall just outside Port Alberni. So this is something I hadn't heard of before but it sounded super neat so I really wanted to check it out. Like I said, it's not a popular spot yet, but I think it could be. The hole in the wall is a massive man-made hole which was once a shortcut to Port Alberni's water lines. Today it's a picturesque waterfall, creek, and just a neat hidden gem worth checking out. I should warn you though, getting here can be a little tricky. There are a few ways to do it, but the easiest is to use GPS and pull off the highway just before you enter Port Alberni. As you can see, it's very limited parking. You have to keep your car parked next to the highway because you have to go through private property. Also, there are no signs, so you'll need GPS to find your way here. But it's a short hike that can be done within 30 minutes. Since we're talking about it, the next stop you're going to want to make on your way to Yukulit or Tofino is the city of Port Alberni. Yeah, you heard me right. This is where you're going to pick up everything you need before you get to Yukulit or Tofino. They have a Walmart, Superstore, pick everything you'll need up here because the options in Yukulit and Tofino are very limited and expensive. We stopped at the Twin City Brewing Company. It's a block off the highway. And I'm just going to say it, they have better food and drinks than what you'll find at the Tofino Brewing Company. It was a pretty chill and relaxed environment, so it's a stop you're going to want to make. Also, just before you get into the city of Port Alberni, you're going to come across this sign along the highway. This is Combs Country Candy. If you have a sweet tooth, this is a must visit. This place is so delicious. They hand make all their candies, chocolate bars, ice cream. Their staff are super friendly and knowledgeable. They just have such a huge selection of anything you can think of. Alright, so this place isn't cheap, but it's pretty damn tasty. So surprisingly on this road trip, you'll pass by a lot of different lakes. 
This is Cameron Lake. Just before you get into McMillan Provincial Park, there are a few resting areas you can pull into with picnic tables and swimming. This is Kennedy Lake. Just before you get into Ukula, BC, there's a provincial park just off the highway. This lake looks so massive. But we ended up stopping at Sprout Lake, which is just past Port Alberni. It had beautiful mountain ranges, and during the summer, the water was the perfect temperature. You can't go wrong stopping at any of these spots. As you drive along the Pacific Highway, you're going to want to stop here at Wally Creek. It's a bit of a local landmark you're going to run into just before you get into Ukulip, BC. It's hard to miss. You'll see this fence covered in just about everything. My personal favorite thing about Wally Creek is you can walk along the river. Since the rocks are so flat, as you can see during the spring, the water can get incredibly high. This is just a neat, quick stop to make on your way to Ukulit in Tofino, BC. Alright, so if you're looking for more videos in Vancouver or on Vancouver Island, check out my channel. Like the video if you're still watching. And until later, I'll see you later. I'll leave you with the sunset.